Hi guys, welcome to Tuesday's literacy lesson. As I've told you this week, we are looking at poetry. So I thought what a good way to start by sharing a poem of the day. So I've got a poem here I thought I would read to you and get us in the mood for some more poetry this week. So listen up. Christopher Robin had weasels and sneezels. They bundled him into his bed. They gave him what goes with a cold in the nose and some more for a cold in the head. They wondered if weasels could turn into measles, if sneezels would turn into mumps. They examined his chest for a rash and the rest of his body for swellings and lumps. They sent for some doctors in sneezels and weasels to tell them what ought to be done. All sorts of conditions of famous physicians came hurrying round at a run. They all made a note of the state of his throat. They asked if he suffered from thirst. They asked if the sneezels came after the weasels or if the first sneezel came first. They said, if you teasel a sneezel or weasel a measle, may easily grow, but humour or pleasel, the weasel or sneezel, the measle will certainly go. They expounded the weasels for sneezels and weasels, the manner of measles when new. He said, if he freezels in droughts and in breezels, then for the heasels may even ensue. Christopher Robin got up in the morning, sneezels had vanished away, and the look in his eye seemed to say to the sky, now how to amuse them today. That's quite, it's quite a silly poem, it's quite a tongue twister, it's quite tricky to read, but it's just a bit of nonsense and um, I do really like that poem obviously being Christopher Robin being our character from the story Winnie the Pooh. So I hope you enjoyed that poem just a quick starter for today poem of the day fantastic. So today guys we are going to be identifying the features of a poem so what do poems usually include? To be successful in today's lesson, you are going to be reading a poem. You are going to be identifying some of the features of a poem. Some of you will be able to identify all of the features in a poem. And then as a challenge today, you are going to share and explain your opinion of a poem. So stating why maybe you like the poem, what features can you spot and why you think they're effective. So. Before we look at the features, I thought I would just share with you the types of poems that you might find, because actually, guys, there are lots of different types of poems. They might be set up differently or include different features. Let's take a look at some. Here are just four examples of poems that we might come across. OK, and again, guys, there are lots and lots of different types of poems, but these are um, specific types that we that you might come across. So you might come across a sense poem and a sense poem focuses on the different senses. So, for example, this one here, I could see the galloping horses pulling the cabbages. I could smell the smoke coming from the chimneys. I could hear the children laughing and playing and I could feel the cold air jumping on me. So this poem focuses on the different senses. So this is called a sense poem. You might come across a sense poem. An acrostic poem. So an acrostic poem spells a word down the side. So for example, this poem, can you see all these letters here? It spells the word London you can see. Now London would be the theme of our acrostic poem so that means all of our our lines essentially would have would have to be about London it's describing something about London that's what makes these poems quite effective. So lights are everywhere on rainy days you need an umbrella nighttime is quiet and bright daytime is busy and light one cup of coffee please not all Londoners drink tea. So this one, our word down the side spells London and our lines are explaining and describing what we might find in London, okay? You might come across a narrative poem and a narrative poem 
is a poem that kind of tells a story. So it might include things that you might find in a story. So for example, here we've got, has anyone seen my Benjamin Bear? I'm lonely without him and full of despair. Mum hunted, Dan hunted, and Tommy too. Oh, Benjamin, where are you? So it kind of tells a story of a boy looking for his bear. You know, we've got our speech marks in there as well. So that would be an example of a narrative poem. The last poem is a haiku poem. Now, these are special poems that correspond to the different syllables. So a haiku poem only has three lines. The first line is made up of five syllables, the second line, seven syllables, and then the third line has five syllables. When I say syllable, it's when we pronounce the vowels in the words. So for example, the first line has five syllables. So the street was dusty, five syllables. So the second line, everyone was coughing loud, seven syllables. And the last line, the chimneys were dark, five syllables. Okay, so that's that type of poem. So these are some poems that you might come across, you might see. I just thought I would show you a couple of examples of different types of poems. Obviously, because there's such a different range of poems, not all poems will include all of the features. Some poems might only have one or two, others might include all of them. It really does depend on the poem. Okay, but these are just some of the common features that are included within poems. So we've got onomatopoeia, which is the sound of things. So for example, boom, crash, whoosh, those are all onomatopoeias. They are very common in, um, in poems. Repetition. So we know that's repeating certain things. So often in poetry, different lines are repeated for effect. Rhyme and rhyming couplets. We know when words rhyme. So for example, gold, old. Often poems have rhyming couplets, which are the two words at the end of the lines that rhyme. They make a couple, we call it a rhyming couplet, okay? Figurative language, we have looked at this before. So examples of figurative language include similes, metaphors. I'm going to write some down here. Similes, metaphors, personification. Of course, on onomatopoeia is also an example of figurative language too and stanzas. Now a stanza is a series of lines grouped together. It's kind of like a poem paragraph, but we just call it a stanza as it's a group of lines in a poem. Looks like a paragraph. Okay, so those are some of our features, guys. Your task today is to choose a poem and identify the features of that poem. All the poems are attached on DB Primary. They're all in one document. So you don't have to do all of them. Just choose at least one and you're identifying the features of them. Let's have a go together first so you can see what I'm on about. So for example, here I have a poem. Okay, I'm going to identify the features of this poem. So as you can see, I've just popped the features down here. So we can all see them and remind ourselves of them. Maybe you can have the features written down next to you too, to help you and remind you of them. So we're going to identify the features. So that means we're going to annotate on the poem, the features that we find. One thing that might be useful to do before is to read the poem aloud. Okay, read the poem aloud, see how it sounds. Can you identify any of the features as you're reading? So let's read this poem aloud. I own a big fat cat, the fattest for miles around. Wherever there's lots of food, that's where he'll be found. He's really good at eating. It's a talent, I suppose. I'm sure if he keeps at it, he'd win the talent shows. I own a big fat cat. He weighs at least a ton. He couldn't run to save his life. Yes, he isn't much fun. His favourite room is the kitchen. I'm sure we all know why. He eats just about everything. So that's why, with a sigh, 
I'd like to tell you, teacher. I'd like to tell you straight. I might have accidentally dropped my homework in his plate. So that's quite a fun poem. The cat's obviously eaten the homework. <gasps> so now we can start to identify the features. Did you manage to identify any of the features as we were reading? We can go down our list and see if we can spot any of the features in this poem. So onomatopoeia. Do we have any sounds in this poem? Not really. We don't have any sounds that are used for effect in this poem. So we don't have that. So that's fine. Yeah. Repetition. Actually, I did notice something was repeated in this poem. The first line, I own a big fat cat. And then it's also repeated here. So it's obviously done for effect. We've got it initially here, then another paragraph. We've then got it repeated, and then another paragraph. And then it goes on to end the poem with the last stanza. So I've highlighted that. I'm then going to draw an arrow and I'm going to write repetition. Repetition. OK. And I'm going to draw the arrow here as well. That's my repetition in the poem. Right, the next feature rhyme and rhyming couplets. Does this poem rhyme? It does. There are some rhyming words here. Look, around and found. Can you spot any more rhyming words? Pause the video and see if you can spot any more rhyming words in this poem. Right, so here are all the rhyming words in the poem. I hope you found them. I'm going to annotate now. I'm going to say rhyming words. And I'm actually going to put this in green to save me from um, drawing it to all the words. So I'm going to put rhyming words here to show that the words in green are rhyming words. The next thing on our list, we have figurative language. So thinking about figurative language, it doesn't have any onomatopoeias in there. We have any similes in there? We don't have any similes in there. What about any, what about any metaphors? We don't have any metaphors in there. What about personification? Can you spot any personification in there? We don't have any personification in there. So this poem doesn't really use any figurative language. And the last one, stanzas. So is the poem split into little paragraphs and grouped into lines? Well, yes. It is. For example, here, this is a stanza. This is another stanza. So remember, a stanza is a group of lines which is referred to as, well, a poem paragraph. Okay, so we would call them stanzas. So, stanzas. And again, I'm going to pop this in purple to save me having to label all of the different ones. Stanzas. There we go. And I'm going to tick it off my list there. So we have annotated and identified the features of this poem. Did you notice that this poem didn't use all the features? And that's okay, because not all poems are going to include the same things. All poems are different. And like I said before, there are different types of poems. OK, some poems rhyme, some poems don't rhyme. So what you're going to do now is you're going to have a go by yourself. Go on to DB Primary and you're going to have a look at the poems that I've put on there. Choose one poem and then you're going to identify all the features of that poem. 
If you are trying to meet the purple success criteria today, which is to share your opinion and explain that poem, then you can write a little paragraph or reflection about what you liked about the poem and why. Which features did you think were most effective and why? Good luck at today's poem, guys. I will see you soon for another literacy video. Bye.